That same evening, as President Trump listened to the rally from the Oval Office, he was also working on his speech to be delivered the next day. And based on documents we've received from the National Archives, including multiple drafts of the President's speech, as well as from witness testimony, we understand how that speech devolved into a call to action and a call to fight. One of the first edits President Trump made to his speech was to incorporate his 5.05 p.m. tweet, revising his speech to say, all of us are here today, do not want to see our election victory stolen by emboldened radical left Democrats. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. He also added, together, we will stop the steal. President Trump's edits continued into the morning of January 6. And as you can see from the president's daily diary here, the president spoke to his chief speechwriter, Stephen Miller, for over 25 minutes that morning. Following his call with Mr. Miller, President Trump inserted for the first time a line in his speech that said, quote, and we will see whether Mike Pence enters history as a truly great and courageous leader. All he has to do is refer the illegally submitted electoral votes back to the states that were given false and fraudulent information where they want to recertify. No prior version of this speech had referenced Vice President Pence or his role during the joint session on January 6. These last minute edits by President Trump to his speech were part of the president's pressure campaign against his own vice president. But not everyone wanted these lines regarding the vice president included in the president's speech, including White House lawyer Eric Hirschman. Did you ever speak to anybody in the White House at the time about this disagreement um, between the president and the vice president other than the president based on the objection from your counsel? Um, maybe had a brief conversation about it with uh, Eric Hirschman. Tell me about that. What do you remember him saying to you about this disagreement? Um, I just remember him um, saying that um, that he had a um, I don't want to get this wrong. I was sort of some of the effect of um, thinking that it would be counterproductive. I think he thought to um, uh, to discuss the matter publicly. So it came up in the context of editing the president's speech on January the 6th? I just came up with the conversation where Eric knew it was in the speech, and so he had a, a sidebar with me about it. And so the speechwriters took that advice and removed the lines about Vice President Pence. And later that morning at 11.20 a.m., President Trump had a phone call with the vice president. And as the committee detailed in an earlier hearing, that phone call was, by all accounts, tense and heated. During this call, the vice president told pre the president that he would not attempt to change the outcome of the election. In response, the president called the vice president of the United States a wimp and other derogatory words. As you can see in this email, after Vice President Pence told President Trump that he would not unilaterally deliver him a second term in office, the speechwriters were directed to reinsert the Mike Pence lines. Here's how one of the speechwriters described President Trump's last minute change to the speech. And as I recall, there was a very tough, um, a tough sentence about the vice president that was, that was, was added. President Trump wanted to use his speech to attack Vice President Pence in front of a crowd of thousands of angry supporters who had been led to believe the election was stolen. When President Trump arrived at the Ellipse to deliver his speech, he was still worked up from his call with Vice President Pence. And although Ivanka Trump would not say so, her chief of staff gave the committee some insight into the president's frustration. It's been reported that you ultimately decided to attend the rally because you hoped that you would calm the president and keep the event on an even keel. Is that accurate? No, I, I don't know who said that or where that came from. What did she share with you about why it was concerning that her father was upset or agitated after that call with Vice President Pence in relation to the Ellipse rally? Why did that matter? Why did he have to be calmed down, I should say? Well, she shared that he had called the vice president a not an expletive word. 
I think that bothered her. And I think she could tell based on the conversations and what was going on in the office that he was angry and upset and people were providing misinformation. And she felt like she might be able to help calm the situation down, um, at least before he went on to stage. The president did go on stage, and then he gave the speech that he wanted to give. It included the formal changes he had requested the night before and in that morning, but also many important last-minute ad-lib changes. A single scripted reference in the speech to Mike Pence became eight. A single scripted reference to rally goers marching to the Capitol became four, with President Trump ad-libbing that he would be joining the protesters at the Capitol. Added throughout his speech were references to fighting and the need for people to have courage and to be strong. The word peacefully was in the staff written script and used only once. Here are some of these ad lib changes that the president made to his speech. Because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. So I hope Mike has the courage to do what he has to do. And I hope he doesn't listen to the rhinos and the stupid people that he's listening to. We fight like hell. And if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. But we're going to try and give our Republicans the weak ones, because the strong ones don't need any of our help. We're tr going to try and give them the kind of pride and boldness that they need to take back our country. So let's walk down Pennsylvania Avenue.